to there guys so this is the first time I'm making such kind of video and I thought it would be a nice day with good weather outside sun is shining and it's 7 uh, it's 5 p.m. and it's still bright outside so I thought I would use the time and make a video introduction of myself because I've I was shooting um, the, not yesterday but the day before yesterday and I was shooting this AK it's mine and it's some kind of special AK because we here in Austria have very strict somewhat strict um, firearm laws in strict in that way because semi-automatic long guns are 99.999 percent prohibited because reasons and this isn't a semi-automatic rifle it's a straight pull rifle a straight pull means you have to pull the charging handle each time after firing so yeah it's pretty stupid but it works and it looks like an AK so I was pleasantly surprised because these rifles these straight pull bolt action rifles are non-restricted over here in Austria which is pretty unique because they are not prohibited and they are first not prohibited and if you're 18 or above you can own one of these without any kind of licensing you just you just have to have a clean background because if you go into a shop and want to buy one of these guns you just went there ask the clerk the other side of the uh, of the table for a long gun or a bold action one he gives it to uh, he gives it to you to inspect yeah yeah that's that's my kind of rifle I want that then he says okay no problem give me your ID he checks if you're 18 or above and after that if everything is all right and he wants to sell the gun to you he can sell it to you and he has to do a background check and you have a three day waiting period the day background check is done in pretty much like 30 seconds that's no problem because everything is electronic today but the three day waiting period is here because it the law st uh, states it so well let me talk about uh, let me talk a bit about my rifle and the story behind it well these rifles are romanian romanian in case maybe you can uh, you notice that already of that rivet um, dust cover and this rifle is a, speci a specific version in the normal uh, 7.62x39 version so the normal AKM um, with those banana magazines uh, in, it's called over here the R94 and this one isn't chambered in, in X39 it's chambered in 223 so the standard NATO round and it uses also banana magazines but the problem with this one is it use uh, it does not have a standard standard sized mag well so standard 223 AK max like the Sastava M92 ones are not fitting in here because this one's a bit, this one is a, a bit smaller but i found that those um, beryl magazines those, those polish surplus plastic whatever magazines are fitting pretty much uh, pretty good or pretty well and the only thing I had to modify is the part back here because it was too long, too long here to fit inside. And there is a pin, uh, the so called, I think, yeah, you can see it over here. And this pin goes across the whole receiver and it was almost blocking this magazine to insert because it only went like this. So it's the nose went in and then it stopped like 
five millimeters of travel because the the pin um, held it back. So I filed it down, and yeah, now it fits perfectly. It also feeds without any problems. Yeah, safety. It also feeds without any problems. Yeah, the trigger is pretty good in AK terms because AKs are not very well known for awesome triggers, but this this is just the standard trigger. It came, so it has just a little bit of pull, no force at all, and then it goes bang. So I'm pretty satisfied with this trigger. It's okay. My uh, because the story behind this gun is I had at first the R94, the X39 version, and I'm not really a fan of the X39 round because it's just too big for me or whatever. I just don't like it. I'm more of an AR guy, also, also AR15, and so I thought, why not look for a two to three version? And these kind of guns were imported back in the er in the late 90s and the early 2000s. So they and only for th uh, for small numbers and just recently they were reintroduced into this country but only there are 94 version and all these sorry that's my brother on the other side of the wall and these R97s are pretty pretty rare as you can see this is uh, model number 007 so really 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 low digit number and yeah don't put it the other way around and yeah, I first bought the R94, mm, not even shot it once, it was factory new, all greased up and all that crap, you know, but I'm, I, I'm owning a Mosin against too, so I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty used to greased up guns. And I went to mm, one of my favorite gun, uh, no, yeah, gun shops in Austria. And was looking at the wall and see, yeah, your standard, pre uh, all new R94, yeah, well, and I saw this gun. And I looked at it and thought, well, at, at the end here, at the back, it looks uh, like a normal AK, normal buttstock, normal pistol grip, all that shit. And it had a small, really, really short um, waffle magazine in it, so, yeah. so, you know waffles, those with those, with those ribs. And I thought to myself, well, this looks pretty strange, because why you would outfit one with sh such a short magazine? And it came out that I looked a bit closer, I thought, uh, and saw it was chambered in 5.56. So, I went to my buddy and, and asked him, well, is it an uh, uh, R94 in 2.2.3? And he said, yes, yes, it's the R97 version. And he got it a new in the thought the day before. I went there and I asked him if he wanted to trade because I had uh, R94, had it like two months or so, never shot it, never, uh, I just degreased it and everything, that's all. And he said, yeah, yeah, it's pretty, uh, why not? So I went back home, took my uh, new rifle with, uh, with me and changed it to a 2 to 3 version. And the first time I thought a more, uh, I had a pretty good deal. And the first time I went to the shooting range, I noticed something rather irritating. Let's say it that way, because the first time I was shooting that gun, I noticed that if I use, uh, if I'm using the, uh, the standard um, iron sights, I was hitting nothing. And I mean, nothing. Re literally, not one hit. Out of, I think I uh, fired 45 shots or 50 shots, downrange at 100 meters. So uh, it's okay. Uh, let's take 100 meters. So oh, okay, no problem. And let's go shooting. Well, nothing hit it. Not not one shot. And I was pretty amazed by it. So I landed to two other guys there, and they were shooting like an M96. Uh, Sweden Mauser and I think an, an Nagant too 
and they were pretty surprised as well <laughs> because they couldn't hit anything either with it. So I thought to myself, well, that's probably the reason why it was hanging at the wall there, because it does not hit any shit. Because uh, I looked down straight at the gun and thought to myself, hmm, there's something canted here. And it turned out that the gas block was installed just a few degrees to the side, I think it was like two or three, and now it doesn't hit anything because if you look down the sides you are looking there about you are shooting five meters to the left at 100 meters because at 50 meters it shot pretty okay, like such a group, but I'm a poor shooter, I'm going uh, shooting maybe once or twice two months, uh, every two months, and I'm trying to uh, change it, but ammo prices are pretty high over here in Austria, so shooting is quite expensive. If you're not uh, getting those full metal jacket and cheap surplus uh, crap, because we are, uh, I'm, do, I do not own a license yet, and we have to uh, to shoot those uh, pretty expensive, um, not hollow points, but everything but full metal jacket so I have to uh, um, buy ammunition for like one bucket piece, uh, one bucket shot and that's pretty terrible if you have a 30 round magazine to shoot but get, let's get back to the topic so I thought to myself I could either go two ways I could either sell this gun which I really don't want because it's pretty rare and I like the looks of it and it has such a low serial number. So I went to the internet and thought to myself, well, it already has a mount installed right here, the standard I came out. And so I went to the internet and found myself a pretty nice optic, I think. There we have it. It's from White Russia, which is great because uh, White Russia is in Europe and it's pretty much just a few meters um, to the right of a few meters you know what I mean to the right of Austria so I bought this one it's a original Russian PKA red dot scope and it's really it's really really great because I got this scope for like what was it back then 200 bucks plus like 10 or 15 euros for shipping and it's in it's really brand new condition as you can see, maybe you can look down there, and it uses a uh, standard not type of batteries, which go in here. It's two medium-sized ones, and you have here uh, you have here your um, your switch, your light switch. So the farther you go, the brighter it will be. As you can maybe see, there is a small red dot in the middle. Can you see it? I hope you can see it. I can see it. <laughs> and this red dot can really go bright because on the max setting you can even look at it at um, bright sun day uh, daytime with no problem. And you can I, I think what uh, how many numbers I think it was like ten or uh, around ten steps. And it's really great. I really love. It. I really, really like this side. It's just a standard red dot, but it looks awesome. I have to say it. You know, a Russian looks not those um, American-styled plastic pieces of shit. And it mounts really easy on the rifle as well. My sling is always in the way. And you just have this rail here. Put it on here. Slide it forward. Hold it. Maybe back. You have this uh, this small lever, pull it on here, and you're set. And it's mounted. It's really easy. Don't doesn't go in the way or any uh, any kind. And it's really really if you you had to uh, I had to um, fit it on this rifle. So there's a small screw down here with a nut. You have to have to hold the nut and screw the screw a little bit out. So it really fits tight on the rifle. So, no no real shaking. The only problem I have with this side is because I'm left-handed and 
Rev tenants are always fucked in this world, especially on AK platforms. So, uh, note this rifle is unloaded. So, no problem pointing it in my direction. As you can see, it's slightly canted to the left side. And if I'm sure, because I'm shooting it left handed, I have to put my face even further to the left, so I have to shoot it like that way. It doesn't really bother me because I'm used to it, but for it's more designed for right handed shooters. And after I went back to the shooting range a few, uh, I think like two or three days later, uh, three, two or three weeks later, and I sighted, uh, sighted it in roughly at 100 meters and then um, shot it for the first time and well I was surprised I actually uh, actually hit the target at 100 meters and after now I think 200 and uh, around 200 rounds shot free with the sight on it I noticed that there is a typical problem because the barrel is heating up my shot placement went all across the target and I have here one with me one of the targets I shot uh, yesterday no, the day before yesterday and as you can see it's a pretty, for my standards it's a pretty okay grouping as, uh, first I was right above the target and I went down and hit there a few times, there a few, as I always do two to, uh, two to four shot um, placements, so and two round bursts or whatever you're calling it. So I shot two rounds which are hitting a bit too high, so I went a little uh, a little down and noticed that it went a bit to the right, so windage adjustment and all that crap. Then one time I hit right into the bolt high, which made me really happy. And after it went, it got pretty hot. I noticed it went further down and to the right, which really sucked. But I let it cool for uh, for for a few minutes. And yeah, my last group was this one at five shot group at 100 meters. Or oh, oh, we see it in the video afterwards. So and I think it was pretty okay. For the for a rifle that wasn't hitting anything at 100 meters because the aim sets were way offset, and just to let you know, it's just a red dot, so no magnification, uh, no mag magnification or anything, just like uh, iron sets but with a red dot. And it was a pretty good grouping, in my opinion, at least. So I hope that next time I'm shooting, I'm getting this group over here not over there so yeah I will try to get better with this rifle and maybe I'm not really set on it yet maybe I'm selling it just because for around a thousand five hundred bucks I could get a way better rifle than this in the same caliber of course and yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not really pleased with this gun. I'm thinking about getting a VZ58. So uh, many people call it the Czechoslovakian um, AK47, which is. It may look like one, but it is a completely different rifle. With uh, it doesn't work the same way. No parts, no parts are interchangeable. The only thing that is in common with the uh, that is in common with these two guns is. Uh, the rounded fire, bow fire, the 7.62 by 39 or the newer ones also both can fire 2 to 3 or whatever. Chambering isn't a problem in this day and age. But yeah, I hope you liked my kind of um, short review story or whatever you I'm calling, uh, uh, would you call it, video and at around the 20 minute mark I'm um, right now. I will insert also my two minute long uh, shooting video with this gun at the shooting range. They will see what I mean with bolt action because many people don't uh, understand or, or can't imagine how a AK bolt action platform looks like.
well yeah if you like this video i would really like if you push, uh, press the like button if you want to see more videos like this and uh, like these ones or small reviews or whatever just write it down in the comments and yeah i hope i see you in the next videos thanks for watching Thank <laughs> you.